Yeah. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another round of sound. This is the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown. I'm Bob Pompiani, and we thank you very much for staying up with us tonight. We have a lot to get into, including the Red Hot Penguins. Still without a regulation loss, despite all these absences of top end players. We'll talk about why they've been successful. Also, the Steelers' expectations after the bye week. But the number one topic tonight on the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown will be the Pitt Panthers who have cracked the nation's top 20, the highest ranked Panther team ever under Pat Narduzzi. Here to talk about these subjects and more is our panel tonight. Mark Caballi from The Athletic who covers the Steelers. Below him is Jeff Hathorne, a man among men over at 93.7 The Fan, the sports director. And to his right, left, depending on how you're looking at this, it's Chris Mack, co-host of the morning show on 93.7 The Fan. Let's start with uh, Pitt here, gentlemen, and Jeff, to you first. Because the Panthers uh, took care of business in a game that a lot of people wondered, could they do it? A uh, big crowd, a team that has a tremendous history, and yet, even though they're not the same team, Pitt pretty much dominated them. So what is their ceiling now moving forward for the rest of this season? Is it undefeated? Can they actually get into a college football playoff? Well, they can. I absolutely believe they can, and the path is right in front of them. they got a Miami team coming off a win. They've got... In North Carolina on a prime time at home. They have maybe a tricky game at Syracuse and a Virginia team that can score a lot of points. And then an ACC title game, probably against Wake Forest, which is exactly how everybody had this figured out at the beginning of the season. Uh, so they do have opportunities. And if they were to win out and if Wake were to win out and be undefeated, I think they do have a shot of being in the college football playoff. Yeah, I, I think they've got a chance of running the table, guys. I just question if any of those wins are going to be enough to put a one win, and let's play it all the way out, right? A one win ACC championship Pitt Panthers team into the playoff ahead of, say, uh, Oklahoma, a Big 12 champion, whoever it may be, uh, ahead of uh, a one loss Alabama team that maybe beats Georgia in the SEC title game. I, I don't, I, I, I'd love to believe they can get there, and I do believe. They can. I just don't know how probable it is at this point because of all the other extenuating circumstances. Man, what a couple, what a difference a couple weeks makes, huh? I mean, we're talking about them cruising into December into January. It's still fit now. I mean, I hate to rip on them at all here, but we still got to see more out of this team before we're just penciling them in to any sort of college football bowl system playoff or nothing. Like you said, Jeff, I mean, they got a couple of tricky ones coming up. Don't don't sleep on Miami. Don't sleep on North Carolina, who, you know, is a team that was supposed to be better, and, and Virginia as well. I mean, I love everything Narduzzi is doing. He got him come back from that Michigan, Western Michigan game. Um, Kenny Pick is playing unbelievable. Their running game playing well. The defense all across the board, but I hate to just go back to it's just Pitt. So we're going to have to take this week to week. I, I'm not even going to look towards December and what they can run until they can beat Miami, North Carolina, and Virginia. Yeah, Miami won last night as they beat an NCAA state team that was supposedly better than them, ranked 18th in the country. So it ain't going to be easy, but it's all there right in front of them. Kenny Pickett, Chris Mack, is he trending to be the Heisman winner? There's some pretty good competition around him. The kid from Ole Miss has been outstanding. There's still uh, Bryce Young at Alabama and others. Where do you see his chances there? Yeah, Corral and Young are the two that stand out because, like you said, they've got the SEC stage. Uh, that was the biggest game Kenny Pickett is going to play yesterday in front of, or at least in front of the largest audience he's going to play a game and, and unless they get to the ACC championship game, at which point that will be it. So uh, he's going to have to continue to make his noise on the stat sheet as he's done to this point in the year, in this season. And it, yeah, I, I do think he, if the Heisman Trophy were being awarded this week, he would have to be one of the invites, I think, just because of the numbers, the way he's put them up. And you have to look at where, where Pitt might be without Kenny Pickett. Would they, would they be anywhere close to where they are now? No, he's, he's what's pushing this team to this level. Well, I think this voting, a Heisman voting, is as much about wins and losses, maybe more so than it is the individual stats. If you're on a losing team or a team that's lost three, four games, you're out. I mean, you're not going to have a chance. But if you're a one- or two-loss team and you've been the reason that that team's had success, 
you have a shot. And Kenny Pickett is a candidate for the Heisman Trophy. He's worked his way in there. He's beaten. He's thrown for 300 yards against a Clemson defense, and he'll have other opportunities. I guess the prime time on Thursday will be the one time where he'll have only eyes on him, uh, and maybe in an ACC title game if they were to get that far. But I would say if they don't get into the ACC title game, he probably doesn't have a chance. You know, the highs is normally given to wide receivers, not wide receivers, running backs, quarterbacks. So saying that. I'm saying Kenny Pickett is probably the best player in college football right now. I mean, I don't see anybody else better than him. I mean, the quarterback from Alabama is putting up similar numbers, but he gets benefited of the doubt because he's from Alabama. Right now, I don't see how you can even possibly think that, that Kenny Pickett isn't number one or number two, and I think he has the best chances ever. But as Jeff said, you have to win. You have to win these games. You're going to have to put up some impressive numbers, too. You're going to have to be in that upper echelon of, uh, of stats at the end of the season or well until the voting comes around for him to have a legitimate shot over the teams of the SEC teams, the teams that, you know, the Blue Bloods of uh, the Heisman Trophy winners. So I think he's as good, if not better, than any other quarterback, running back, Heisman Trophy candidate in the land right now. All right, now let's switch to a hey, painful topic for um... – Chris, I'm sure, and that's Penn State because Penn State yesterday not only lost, <laughs> but the way they lost, they got dominated on the ground by an Illinois team that should not have been do able to do that, but they did. But the question I have for you guys here, and Jeff, we'll start with you, is this overtime rule, which was changed a few years ago. Uh, so now in the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, it went all the way to a ninth overtime. We had a, essentially one play, two point conversion. I thought it was absolutely terrible. They have to change it, don't they? Or, and if they do, what would you change it to? Yeah, it's stupid. It's absolutely stupid. I mean, <laughs> I know people complain about the 25 yards are in being bad for football, but at least you have to make a couple of plays, and there's an option for a field goal or a missed field goal or a turnover or something. But one play over and over from the same place. Listen, this isn't like hockey where you have 82 games where a shootout's kind of fun or Major League Baseball where you have 162 where you start somebody at second base. And, okay, it's a little gimmicky, but there's a lot of other games. There are only 12 college football games. Either play it the way that you had it, play 10 minutes and end up with a tie, which I realize no one wants, but that would be better than just having – Two-point conversion after two-point conversion. It was, it was comical what happened yesterday. Well, I want to be careful, though, guys, to overreacting to an anomaly here. And as one of the 100,000 or so people that was standing there in disbelief while we watched this thing play out, it was obvious to us that neither one of these teams wanted to win this football game. And that's what I think we need to focus on here. Is both offenses were atrocious in those overtime periods, two-point conversion tries, whatever you want to call them. Sean Clifford has a ball land in his hands. He drops it. They're, they're running gadget plays uh, from the three-yard line to try and get in. Illinois refusing to just turn around and hand the ball off on their first two tries, even though they just run for 350 yards. So I don't want to overreact much the way college football overreacted to the LSU-Texas A&M five overtime game a few years ago when they instituted this cockamamie two-point conversion try thing beyond the third overtime. And that's what changing it again would be, would be an overreaction to what was just a really ugly, really bad, really poorly played football game. Yesterday. All right, Mark, make it quick, please. Well, I got two things real quick. Number one is if any game I've ever seen should have been a tie, that should have been a tie. That's how bad of a game that was. <laughs> and number two is a nine overtime game is supposed to be exciting, right? That was a snooze fest for the past hour there for that game. And saying that just for the sheer enjoyment of the game, you got to get rid of it because it was just boring. <laughs> it was. It was torturous. It was a loss torturous. They on top of that, so now they drop. Anyway, uh, we have a lot more coming up, including the Steelers now. They had a bye week. What is going to happen to them in the second half of the season? We'll talk about it when we come back. This is the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown on KDKA TV. The number one Cochrane Sports Showdown is brought to you by number one Cochrane. Go one better. And by Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield. Have a greater hand in your health.